Welcome inside episode 645 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Alongside Brandon Pillar up in the Blue Mountains and the Ottawa Senators have defeated the Montreal Canadiens. And no, that's not a recording. It is three wins in a row against the Habs. This time, it was out in Newfoundland. And Ross, stop me if I've said this before or if we've said this before, but this time it's actually official. Hockey is back. The 2022-2023 NHL regular season starts today. So we're going to get some hot takes pumping up the oven in this episode. Yes, not only our hot takes, but yours as well at Send Central. They're flooding in. Can't wait for this show. And it's all brought to you by Bet Online. More props, odds, and lines than ever before. Visit BetOnline.net. It's where the game starts. And now the show starts. This is the Locked On Senators podcast. It's your team every day. Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Senators your first listen. On this Friday, October 7th, we are free and available on all platforms, including on YouTube, where the best way you can help the show grow is to like every video by simply clicking the thumbs up and subscribing to the Locked On Senators channel. We've got a great weekend full of content for you as well with crossovers with Locked On Bruins, Locked On Sabres, and the Locked On Maple Leafs podcast, but Pillsy. Not to beat a dead horse, but the Ottawa Senators have beaten the Montreal Canadiens again. I mean, we better get used to hearing that, Ross. I think that's going to be something uh, we say a lot this year. But after the preseason, the Sens don't see the Habs for quite some time. I think it's Thank not until December. Uh, we could use a break from that franchise, that's for sure. But it's always nice getting wins, even if it's in the preseason. A 4-3 win for the Ottawa Senators with uh, some usual suspects. Getting on the score sheet. Yeah, certainly. And and Habs Twitter already up in arms about Tim Stutzla. And why wouldn't they be? With a goal, two assists, plus three, five shots on goal, leading the entire game in every one of those categories. So when he comes to play, like he did last night, and there were a couple plays where he was knocked down, and they were already getting into the diving mode. And I don't want to dive into this subject too much, Pilsy, because... I'm too busy watching the highlights of that penalty shot goal right over the pad. That's where they teach in hockey school to put a puck on, on a penalty shot or a breakaway yeah. situation. Impossible to stop there right between the blocker and the pad. And Ross, you know what? I'll give Habs, pa- uh, Habs fans a pass here because what else are they going to talk about? <laughs> like they, There's nothing interesting or exciting going on for the Habs preseason. Uh, they've lost Dash every... Three for- Dash three for Caulfield if you're keeping score at home. They've lost every game. Of course, the the only interesting thing to talk about is Tim Stutzla. So I, I don't blame them at all there. <laughs> um, Certainly seems that way. And how about Caden Primu? This guy's supposed to be the next up-and-coming goalie. I don't know if I've seen a goalie with that weak of a five-hole in quite some time. Like, Brady Kachuk passed oh, yeah. that puck in between his legs. That was... It's not going to get much easier than that. And then Claude Giroux rips one top cheese. We're going to see a lot of that this season, I think so too. And then Drake Batherson, he also goes five hole on uh, Caden Primu. So the Habs goaltending, once Carey Price has left the building, I mean, J- Jake Allen, he he is a good goalie and he's stood on his head a couple of times against the Sens, but up in the pipeline for goaltending, not looking so great. No, but they are just entering a rebuild. And obviously, we're having a little fun at the Habs' expense. Why wouldn't we after three victories in a row? But, of course, results do not matter in the preseason. I think that goes without saying. Unless You'd rather get the wins, though. Yeah, but I mean, if I'm sure there's some Habs fans who are hate-watching this. They're already getting their, their rude comments teed up. But this, this was just a game where yeah. I liked what I saw from the Senators. And, again, it was a tough camera angle. We're in a community rink in gander newfoundland and yeah. shout out to the, it was loud in there you could tell in the broadcast i was oh, yeah. uh, i synced up my radio with dean brown gord wilson tsn 1200 and um it was loud in there and credit sounded like a lot of kids the sense post on their social media they had the the kind of signing uh it was almost like a red carpet type thing where the players were going and there were some fun quips back and forth of someone asking Giroux who his second favorite team was he said no 
my only my team, only my team. And wow, I'm sure there's some Flyers fans that maybe shed one one little tear. He and doesn't Panthers love us. fans. Poor, yeah. they're they're like the the stepchildren of this. So, yeah, but I mean, they offered him one by one. Come on, yeah, come on. You don't deserve him if you're gonna disrespect him like that. But the goal scores for Ottawa, you mentioned it. Drake Batherson gets his second of the preseason, 38 seconds into this game. Then Brady Kachuk doubled the scoring, and I don't think Caden Primo's pads have still hit the ground from that Brady Kachuk shot. He was so late going, uh, reacting to that one. And so Stutz had two assists in the first eight minutes of this game. Caden Gooley gets the, the Habs on the board 2-1 after the first period. Then Kirby Dak ties the game, a power play goal for Montreal. Assist to, who cares? <laughs> number 11. Uh, and then Tim Stutzla gets to Ottawa back. I mentioned the penalty shot there. So Ottawa is leading 3-2 into the third period where Claude Giroux makes it 4-2. However, Josh Anderson again right away makes it a one-goal game. And that's what I want to pick up on because over the last two games especially, the first game against the Habs was a comeback where Ottawa just didn't start on time and then had to battle back. But the last two games, Pilsy, Ottawa keeps getting these two-goal leads and then allowing the Habs back into it. How do you think they could tighten up so that doesn't continue to be a problem in the regular season? You have to learn how to play with a lead to be successful. Yeah, and that's something the Ottawa Senators are not used to doing, Ross. Uh, last year, often it was you're playing catch-up, like right from the get-go. Like how many games started with the other team scoring a goal on their first chance? Like the Sens would have, be out shooting them like 5-0. Five, five the opponent gets one chance, goal. You're down one nothing. You're on your heels. So they're going to have to totally change their mindset now playing with the lead more often, hopefully. I think it all comes down to the defense, Ross. Like, the offense is doing their job. Like I mentioned a couple shows ago, it's not the same as last year where the Sens would get these great A scoring chances and hit the post or a goalie would get a good save. Like, they're going to capitalize on a lot of these now when you have guys added to the fold like the Brinkett, like Giroux, and... You get guys like Norris, Timmy, uh, and Brady, Dr and Drake, a year older, a year wiser, a year stronger, better, etc. They're going to score more often. So I'm not so worried about the scoring. It's can the defense stay poised? Can they stay calm? And honestly, I think they're going to have to have the, the mindset that sometimes a good offense is the best defense. Like, I don't think this decor is going to be shutting teams down while hemmed in in their own zone i think their first plan of action is let's just get this puck out and hopefully the forwards can possess it and we don't have to worry about playing so much in our end like they just they don't have the, those shut down guys that are going to be able to stop other teams top sixes so i really think a lot of this year's success is going to be hinging on the defense transitioning up to the offense Okay, and that is a tease for what's coming up on the show, which is going to be some hot takes, both Ottawa Senators and otherwise, heading in to this 2022-23 season that begins overseas, probably when you're listening to this. It's a 2 o'clock Eastern time start between Nashville and San Jose. A couple sends abroad, Mark Borowiecki, Eric Carlson, among others, Matthew Shane, in these games as well, but... The focus stays on Ottawa, and through this preseason, the power play has been great, but they did go 0 for 5 in last night's meeting. This is going to be the last show talking about the preseason, Pilsy, because Ottawa finishes their eight-game schedule, which is ridiculous. Six games was perfect, and I didn't realize that until it happened. I believe I'm on record as saying that eight was good for all these new guys to gain chemistry. I'm sick of it. Six yeah. is plenty. A lot of teams played six. Ottawa had the Kraft Hockeyville games with Montreal. Montreal could go 0-8 in the preseason, though. So they are on a historic pace for a historic franchise. But when you look at the eight games, my big takeaway is the debrinkett Giroux connection seems strong. Those guys have assisted on, what, four or five goals already with each other? Yeah, that's definitely a good one, Ross. I'll, my biggest takeaway from the preseason is look out for Shane Pinto. Uh, I've Ooh. said it a couple times. I really underestimated how good his shot is, how good offensively he is. This kid is going to make that third line absolutely pop. We talk so much about that top six, but I think DJ Smith is going to be in a position where he doesn't have to just overload and play those guys every other shift. He's going to have options to get that third line in the mix more often than not too. So Shane Pinto popping off and showing that not only can he be a guy that plays a good defensive game, 
but he can also excel on the power play. And I think him and Joseph, even I'll even throw him and Tyler Mott are uh, good offensive duos that can get the job done too. So Shane Pinto has been my biggest uh, standout for this preseason. Well, if you wanted to put your money where your mouth is responsibly and you believe in Shane Pinto like Pilsy and I do, you could go to betonline.net where you can get Shane Pinto to win the Calder Trophy right now at plus 2,000, Pilsy. Plus wow. 2,000 for Shane Pinto to win the Calder Memorial Trophy. The same odds, actually, as Jake Sanderson. So if you put in a $10 bet on Shane Pinto to win the Calder and it hits a betonline.net, that's a $200 win for you on a $10 bet. So if you believe in Shane Pinto, you can go ahead to betonline.net. It's your home for all your sports scores, news, podcasts. Everything you need is available to you at betonline.net. They're the number one sponsor of the Locked On Podcast Network when it comes to wagering because they have everything you need. It's the fastest and easiest way to check on all your favorite games and events. Go see it for yourself, whether it's on the internet, on your desktop, or on your mobile device. It's betonline.net, where the game starts. And Ross, the NHL regular season starting, that's my happy place. But I've got another happy place. It's Shawarma Palace, the place where we spent countless hours, Ross. Even Many though nights. I'm not an Ottawa resident, there has not been a single time where I've come to visit you in Ottawa and we've gone to Sens games and we haven't gone to Shawarma Palace multiple times. I Remember like, last year on the way to Laval, we had to stop. On the way to the Belleville Sens uh, first game of the year, yep. we had to stop at one of their nine locations in Ottawa. Yeah, they make it easy to get the best shawarma, and uh, they are our newest sponsor. We're so stoked to have Shawarma Palace coming uh, onto the show. We are going to talk about how delicious everything is there. I mean, the first time I went there, Ross, you were like, my go-to is always the chicken shawarma. I I was like, I'm going to try the beef. Love the beef as well. The key is extra garlic sauce. I mean, no matter what you get, get that garlic sauce on there. Garlic potatoes, and they're usually good. If you get the extra garlic sauce, they'll hand you about 10 uh, fresh breath mints after being like, you're going to need these. You're, you're going to have some garlic breath, that's for sure. And the thing I love about Shawarma Palace Ross is they don't give you these tiny servings with, no. uh, with inflation and uh, shrinkflation that's going on everywhere. The prices are jacked and they're giving you less portions. Nah, not Shawarma Palace. The, typically, if you get the platter, that's two meals. Like if you're eating the platter in one sit down, you're going to be extra full. So Shawarma Palace, they've got it done. And Look, they have nine locations, but you don't even have to visit their locations if you want because they have all the delivery services you need that can go right to your door. DoorDash, Uber Eats, and more. We're so happy to share our love of Shawarma Palace with you, our listeners. Next time you go to Shawarma Palace, drop us a line and let us know how you liked it. Shawarma Palace, the ultimate Shawarma place in Ottawa. The only Shawarma place in Ottawa with all nine locations. I'm heading there right after we record. While you're listening to this, I'm probably at Shawarma Palace because it's going to be the first stop I make every time I head home, I go to Shawarma Palace. So visit one of their nine locations in Ottawa, including how lucky are the kids at Carleton University in their food court? Are you kidding me? Shawarma Palace, what I would have done to have Shawarma Palace in my food court back in my schooling days. So it's Shawarma Palace. Go get Ottawa's best Shawarma and let them know that Locked On Senators sent you. All right, Pilsy. Thank you again to Shawarma Palace. God, I love them. I can't wait to have one when I get home. But it is time for hot take season. As the regular season is coming up, we will have a very special guest on Monday or Tuesday show. What do you think we're going to we're going to roll it into? Tuesday. Tuesday? Yeah. Tuesday. All right. Tuesday. Tuesday. Beware, very special guest Wednesday, Dean Brown will join us as well the day before the NHL regular season. And then Cheryl Pounder will join us next year. If you missed any of our interviews throughout the summer, by the way, they're all available for you on demand on your favorite audio podcast platform and on YouTube where the numbers continue to grow. And we're extremely excited to share our love for the Ottawa Senators with you every day throughout this regular season. Monday through Friday, we'll have Locked On Senators. And after every game, make sure you're locked on to the postcast. Coming back next Thursday, season two of the postcast. After the Ottawa Senators open their season, 
against the Buffalo Sabres. Could Craig Anderson be playing in that game for the Buffalo Probably. Sabres? Likely. The oldest player in the NHL now, Pilsy. I saw that come across the wire the other day. Hey, and what's in the water in Ottawa? The two oldest players were Chara and Anderson. So maybe it's not the water. It's probably the shawarmas. They probably got into the shawarmas. <laughs> That's some good healthy food that'll keep you going. Yes, fresh <laughs> and delicious. All right, let's get into our hot takes. And I'm going to put the link in our description on YouTube of our first ever hot take. You brought oh up one with Hogberg that you had. Would you like to share that? <sighs> <laughs> My hot take, this was back in the Canadian division days, so jump back to that time. We had in the, COVID in the brain world. fog back then. Yeah, and I had Marcus Hogberg brain back then as well. My <laughs> hot take was Marcus Hogberg would be the best backup goalie in the entire Canadian division. That didn't exactly go well. Uh, he had a terrible season and never returned to the NHL. So maybe I should send him a, a card saying, I'm sorry that I mushed you, Marcus Hogberg. An apology card? Hey, since you brought up Hogberg, we got to give a, a shout out to our friends at La Brigade, yeah. uh, the, <laughs> the only Francophone podcast. Did you see their tweet today? Yeah, yeah, I like it. With this? So uh, it's like, a, for those listening, it's like an evolution form of a Pokemon. And it Charmander. Goes, yeah, Charmander is Hogberg. Then Forsberg is let's see, Let's see your Pokemon knowledge. Charmeleon, nice. Okay. And then Hellberg is Charizard. And if you yeah. saw the photos that the Sens posted yesterday on social media, Hogberg is a large human being. Hellberg, you mean? Hellberg. How many Hogberg's times a big dude too, today? though. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt, man. And if you want to hear us gush over Hellberg's new gear, oh. go check out yesterday's Locked On Senators. Ross, I, I think that was the most universally loved goalie pad design that I've ever seen. Like, And no one was just like, man, these are okay. Like, Every single person was like, oh my God, these are amazing. Well, how about, how about the fact that it basically looks like the logo that we're unveiling... For our new merch, the shop is coming soon yep. to an internet site near you. So I'm going to pull that up for our YouTube listeners as well. But it literally looks looks identical. Yeah. Like, I don't think that you could even draw Great it up. Great minds and, think alike. I mean, all it's missing is the the headphones for those listening to the pod around the, the helmet. So that's where you can really see the kind of the graphic. We were a little worried it was a little Vegasy. But then with the laurels on the helmet, it's such a great touch. I think that really kind of sends it up a little bit there. So merch coming soon, and and we're it's not just one shirt like it was last time. We've got a ton of designs, and we got to shout out Graham Scott at Sensual Healing. He'll be yes. with us at the home opener as well. All right, Pilsy, we've taken some time to get there, but these takes are so spicy. It's like when you you got a hot tub, you you don't just like jump in right away it's gonna hurt it's gonna be hot so you dip your toe in and yep. now we're settling in our body's getting used to the temperature now hit me with some spicy takes let's go i'm, I'm gonna start with uh it's ironic that the nhl regular season is starting today but you're wearing a belleville senator sweater so i'm gonna loop that in as my uh segue my first hot take of this season is soundboard coming soon yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll have better <laughs> sounds than that. Um, the Your Belleville Senators will reach the Calder Cup Finals this year. Now, I know, obviously, that is an incredible hot take for a team that has only made the play-in series and has only had one playoff home game in their entire existence. And never but, won. Uh, yeah, <laughs> But I really think this team has a lot of the pieces. Like, I think before they were a lot of top-heavy teams where you're hoping uh, some of the top prospects don't graduate and that they carry most of the load. It really seems to me like this year's team is set up for success as a team, not just as a development place for your first-rounders. Like, top to bottom, like that forward core, you're going to have Sokolov, Yarventi, Ridley Gregg's going to be there, uh, Jake Lucchini, Angus Crookshank, like the list goes on and on of guys, Cole Reinhardt, like this is going to be a deep team. Maybe you see Jace Hauer look down there for a while as well. That'd be then, nice. Then you look at the decor, you're going to have uh, probably Lassie Thompson and Jacob Bernard Docker there for most of the year. I really like the pickups 
that uh, Ryan Bonus made in the offseason, getting Larson, uh, Christians Rubens, Dylan Hetherington, and then goaltending. If Sogard and Mando can be the two and they can stay healthy, I got a good feeling about this. And it's going to be interesting to see now that Magnus Helberg is brought into the fold, when Cam Talbot comes back, what happens with Helberg? He's going to have to clear waivers. But if he does, a tandem of Sogard and then uh, Magnus Helberg and then Mando as a third goalie, the height on those three guys is yeah. absolutely like the size, the sheer mass of that goalie trio would be wild. And Troy Mann, an excellent head coach. So I just think they're poised. I, I'm not saying they're going to have the most points in the regular season. They're not going to be the best team. But I just think depth-wise, they have all the pieces in all the right places to make a long playoff run. And I love my Belleville Senators. I want to see them go farther in the playoff. The good people of Belleville. and the Friendly at, City. Yeah, the Friendly City, the Bay of Quinty, and the CAA Arena needs to live playoff glory. So my hot take is the Belleville Senators will make it all the way to the Calder Cup Finals. And I know there were some people who were a little harsh on uh, Igor after his training camp in Ottawa, but this guy was just scratching the surface last year in Belleville. He knows he can be more consistent, and he hit 50 points. So to follow up on your hot take there, I'll say that if Igor plays the full season in Belleville, I'm calling 65 or more points. For yep. Igor, I can 15 see it. point improvement. I'm going to say 30 goals, 35 assists, if not flip, maybe 35 and 30, but 65 is a good total points that I'm looking for to for, for Soko to take the next step in his development. But I like that, Pilsy. And I'm also going to stick with production for my first hot take. And I'm up in Ottawa for this one. One of Josh Norris or Alex DeBrinket will hit the 50 goal milestone this season that's lofty but i think that they're they're talented enough to do it i lean to brink it but i'm yep. giving myself an exit strategy that if josh norris gets there i can pat myself on the back i mean yeah if any player can hit 50 not since stanley he, danny heatley's been around have we had a 50 goal he's score, the so. only 50 goal scorer in franchise history and he's done it back to back years yeah all-star all-star right there. So if, if we can have uh, anybody hit that half a century mark, I'll be stoked. My money's on Debrinket, but I wouldn't count, count, count sorry, Josh Norris out just yet. Yeah, very fair. All right, well, I'll, I'll follow up with my next one because everyone already knows it if you've been listening to Locked On Senders all summer long, but it goes hand in hand. If Alex Debrinket gets 50 goals, how many of them are Claude Giroux going to assist on? <laughs> He's 77 points away from 1,000. And he's going to hit it this year. There's no slowing down in his game. And I know it's just preseason, but he looks better than I remember seeing him. And maybe it's because he was wearing different colors. Maybe I got the glasses on, but he looks so smooth. Everything he does on the ice is methodical. His shot is still elite. And the passing is just so crispy, as the oh, fellas yeah. would say. Everything about that pickup just screams next step in this organization. And that includes his production to me. This guy, on average, over the last decade, has has put up more than 77 points. Last year, took a bit of a dip, especially in Philly. But he's over a point per game at the end of the year with the with the Florida Panthers. He's on a good a, team. Yeah. In a 20-game sample size. So let him cook. I'm even going to say 80 points on the year Whew. for Claude Giroux. Wow, Ross, I was, I was checking the schedule. I was trying to find a, a divine intervention moment. I think it's a little too early in the season, but the Senators' last game, home game, against the Philadelphia Flyers no. is March 30th. I think that's yeah. probably too early. There's still what game of the year? Uh, I'll do I'll do this by subtraction. Oh, you're not on a hockey reference? Because sometimes... No, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games after okay. that. So, so maybe oh hit boy, 70 in that guy. game. That's Maybe. that's 75 games. So if okay. you think he's going to be a point per game guy, 77 at 75th game, that's not too crazy. That would be is Imagine it in Ottawa or is it in, in Philly? Ottawa? Okay, in Ottawa, I almost March think it'd be 30th. better in Philly. If no, it's better. No, no, no. It's better in Ottawa because it's like you wish you could celebrate this. Yeah, fair. As like a Philadelphia that. fan, but Claude Giroux's an Ottawa guy now. We're we're celebrating at home. All right, so I've got one of Alex DeBrinket or Josh Norris to scratch 50 goals, and Claude Giroux will hit 1,000 points this NHL season. All right, 
my next Don't you one. have one more? You got one more here. And then we're going to get oh, to the I fans because we get a lot of great write-ins here too. So Ross, you're obviously, your takes were more focused on ice production. Yep. I've got one thing on my mind this year for your Ottawa Senators organization, mm-hmm. and that's playoffs. My first hot take was Belleville making it all the way to the cup finals. My next hot take is your Ottawa Senators not only making the Stanley Cup uh, playoffs, but in round one, like uh, we're kind of predicting, the Ottawa Senators likely will get in in that last wild card spot. It's a tough, tough conference in the East here. If the Toronto Maple Leafs finish somewhere on top, you're looking at the Battle of Ontario for round one. And I don't, Ross, this might not even be a hot take. If the Ottawa Senators and Toronto Maple Leafs play in round one, your Ottawa Senators will win that playoff series in seven games. Like, if that happens, I will be running to the bank and taking out loans. I don't care what the interest rates are and heading to betonline.ag <laughs> and throwing... Responsibly. Responsibly, yeah. Super responsibly, super <laughs> responsibly be putting a pile of shekels on the Ottawa Senators to win that series. You're putting because, your Toronto condo on it. Yeah, actually, that's great. Yeah, that's simple. Yeah, nice and easy. <laughs> um, <laughs> but that's, like, I just think that would be the perfect storybook ending to this season. I, they could get swept the next series if they beat the Leafs in round one and continue that Leafs curse and kind of snap that Sens curse of not being able to win the Battle of Ontario in the playoffs. That would just be magical. So that's my second hot take. Both my takes are playoff focused. This is a new Ottawa Senators franchise, folks. I would lose so many years of my life and my hair would be all the way gray, if not white, through a series of the Battle of Ontario. I was at the edge of my seat nervous that the streak was going to end at 18 years when it was game seven against Toronto or against Tampa. I wasn't nervous for, for a single second. Shout out, Nick Paul. Yeah. However, that would be a fairy tale finish to the rebuild because it started seven years after Toronto. Ah, three years after, 2018, 2015. That sort of thing. Wow. I'm, I'm, I'm talking slowly to let that sink in for the listener yeah. and the viewer. Just imagine Battle of Ontario, round one. Are you calling seven games? It's going to be seven. Yeah, as is tradition with the Toronto as Maple Leafs. Tradition, yes, and Toronto will will go up probably three nothing to start that game. In How about five one? <laughs> yeah, well, we don't have Evgeny Dadanov, so I don't like the odds on that one. Um, but yeah, they're going to go up big time. They're going to get entitled. Leafs fans are going to be planning the parade. The Leaf pile is going to be uh, feeling themselves, and then it's going to start raining. And those Leafs are going to get soggy, they're going to get raked up, and they're going to get put in a garbage bag and sent out to the curb before round two even begins. Wow. What a what a world that would be should it happen. First, the Ottawa Senators need to find a way to get into the playoffs. And I hate to bring it up, but Sens have never won a Game 7 in franchise history. That has to end at Have the point. Leafs ever won a Game 7 in franchise history either? Uh, a few times. In our Ottawa. lifetime? Jeez. Yeah, unfortunately, if you were against Ottawa, I remember them way too clearly. <laughs> yeah, that's that's fair. That's Long fair. time ago, before High Definition TV. You can watch our show in High Definition on YouTube, and you can also subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. It also goes a long way if you write a review on Apple Podcasts. You can put a little note in, just say, thank you, good job, boys, appreciate it, whatever. As long as there's five stars, you just have to write something. Uh, but five-star review goes a very long way can be your thanksgiving gift to us and we'll return that with a merch drop in the next couple of weeks coming up we're going to get into your reaction to our hot take question and there are some spicy ones i will tell you that all that's coming up on the other side of a quick break right here on the locked on senators podcast all right pilsy it's hot take season with the nhl season starting Later today, but the Ottawa Senators will begin their quest to take the next step next Thursday, October 13th in Buffalo against the Sabres before they head to Toronto to take on the Leafs in Ontario, provincial capital. They think it's the center of the universe, but it will be a Saturday night affair. And then, and then, and then the Sens come marching in 
to the Canadian Tire Centre. We will have boots on the ground. A reminder that we're all going to meet before the game at the upper level at the Senseplex Stanley's Bar and Grill. $5 Budweiser, $5 Bud Light, and it's going to be a great day for Ottawa Senators hockey. We'll have more information on that throughout next week as it gets closer, but put it on your calendar. If you're heading to the CTC, whether you got tickets with us or without it, you have no requirements to get in. We had a few DMs asking like, hey, like, did I have to buy through your link to get to the Stanleys? No. Everybody is welcome at Stanleys. The deal, $5 pints is for everyone. They're going to make some food specials as well. It's going to be a great day in the nation's capital. And you know I'm loading up the night before. You got to get that solid base. I'm obviously going to Shawarma Palace. All right. Now we head over to our Twitter page. And if you're watching on YouTube, we're going to scroll through all of the great answers. I believe we're at about 60 or 70 responses so far. But as I scroll down, Pilsy, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get you to stop us as though it's like a spinning wheel when you like one and you want to touch on that. Okay. All right. And I'll good. read out a few of my own as well. So here, here's King Karos as well, right off the bat, saying that DJ is, is gonna get fired after 25 games. I think a pessimistic outlook of this season. Is is DJ Smith on the hot seat? What is your take on that? Well, if if there's another bad start, then yeah, I can see this happening. I, I am trying to be optimistic. The Cam Talbot injury does hurt, but we love Anton Forsberg, so he's going to keep the house steady here. I don't think the bad start's going to happen again, but if it does, this would be classic Ottawa Senators. Bad start, out of the playoffs, finish the season as one of the best teams. So I don't, actually, maybe that's not even a hot take. That's just history repeating itself there uh, from King Kairos. But hopefully that hot take goes ice cold. It would be the 25 game mark would be December 6th this year. So just okay. kind of give you a reference. That would be beyond American Thanksgiving. And we do believe he means Troy Mann as Trent Mann is the assistant GM oh, yes. in, in <laughs> Ottawa. Margaret O'Toole. Former Sen Central citizen. You're never a former Sen Central citizen. You're always, you're always a Sen citizen. Central citizen. It's like when you're uh, when you're an MVP. You're always an MVP. Yeah. Uh, Margaret O'Toole says that Brady Kachuk will stop taking in players like Stray Cats and only live with his fiance by Christmas. Do you, I, don't I don't buy. I, I don't think that's gonna. That happen. doesn't happen. Yeah. Any player that gets called up, they're gonna have a spot in Brady's basement. So I, yeah. I don't see that one happening. How about Keegan Little? Keegan, our guy, Ottawa. Will make the playoffs, but not as a wild card team. That's a spicy meatball right there, and I would love that. But however, if that happens, they're probably not playing the Leafs in round one, and that makes <laughs> their round one matchup a little more difficult. Yeah, how Nick Spence, another Sen Central citizen, Thomas Shabbat will be top three in Norris voting at the end of the season. That's definitely a hot take. The only reason I don't think that will happen is because so often it's based on points and. When you start, like, Kale McCarr, Adam Fox, there's only one spot left, really, for uh, the top three Norris votes. So that'll be tough. Okay. Uh, we've got M-L-I-M-L-O, sends Army underscore 11. That's an easier way to do it. They will live comfortably as of all Habs fans for the entire season. I don't know that's if that's a hot, hot take. take. Yeah, that's, our, that's happening in the preseason. We have uh, some of our favorite Habs Twitter accounts already uh, going head over heels about the Tim Stutzla diving. So that's already happened. At Ott Stuz says Claude plus 75 points. So little. There you go, Ross. Fist, fist bump on that one. You and me. Yep. Going to carry, carry Claude all the way there. So he, he can send us a thank you card at the end. Peter writes in that Magnus Helberg will earn a full time. Not even backup. He says yeah. one B spot. By the end of the year, that that's a hot take. I look, I'm a big Magnus Helberg guy, even in small sample size. But I hope that doesn't happen because that means Talbot <laughs> or Forsberg is is bumped out, and that's interesting if that happens. But hey, goalie friendly show. If Magnus Helberg straight up earns that spot, I'll give it to him. Another similar one from James here: Mad Sogard and or Magnus Helberg will be the permanent backup by the end of the year. Yeah, see, these are interesting because, like, those are great takes, but you have to look at, okay, if that happens, who are they replacing? Yeah, exactly. I mean, Cam Talbot in the final year of his contract, so I would be more of the understanding that one of them could prepare themselves to be that guy next year. 
But this yeah, year, I, I mean, it's a little early for Mads, in my in my opinion. Yep. I'd like to see him get some more consistent time and ha- have that Calder Cup ring on his finger before he heads to the NHL. <laughs> Tim Stutzla is going to have an over ninety point campaign. That comes from Bert. 90 points is very difficult to do in the NHL. I've got Tim Stutzla right around 80 to 85 points. So I guess an extra five points if they play Detroit a couple times at the end of the year or something, uh, that can be happening. Sean's going big at the real Moon Rock. Sends win the cup. Love that because as I do every single year, I have a future for the Sens to win the cup and the odds are pretty damn good at betonline.ag. So I'm with you, Foise. Let's go. Sends cup. No, that's Sean Schroon. Oh, I thought that was Sean Foise. Schroon Rock. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Foise will get in the mix if and when uh, he sees this one. Uh, Jake Sanderson for Calder. That comes from Kalen underscore Sexton. I like where your head's at, but I'm giving Pinto the edge out of those two, even just on their own team. The only reason I would give Sanderson the edge over Pinto is to win the Calder as a third line center. I don't know. He's on the power play. Yeah. He's going to produce if he plays with those guys all year. Definitely. But, I mean, Jake Sanderson is on that same unit. <laughs> right. So, yeah. But, well, it just seems like Pinto's been been the second trigger man when Debrink it's not open. They, yeah. they go up to that high slot, and he's been able to convert for it. He's also amazing at tipping pucks. So, he's going to get some dirty goals, too, you think? Yeah, you hope. Yep. Well, that kind of rolls into this next one. Ryan Allen says that the Sens will lead the league with 720 goal scores. I don't, I'm don't. i curious if that would even lead the league. I feel uh, like Tampa Louis, had seven. No, the St. Louis Blues had nine 20 goal scores last year. Really? I see them repeating that. So yeah. I think they'll be right up there, but I don't think they'll beat the Blues. Right. So he's saying that everyone in the top six plus Pinto will get 20 goals. Yep. I'm... I, I'm with that for sure. It, yeah, I Even mean, Joe would, Seth could sneak in there. Just going to say that. Like, Formanton yeah. had 18 goals last year, and I think Joe Seth's probably a better player. So, yep. talk about negotiation. I mean, obviously, we don't know anything about the Hawk Gannon situation, but Alex Formanton went from, like, a pretty important part of this team to a guy who nobody cares about because Tyler Mott's had a good preseason. Like, has, any, has anyone had a, a further falling in terms of importance to an organization? Probably not. Yeah, that's it's a great point. Like I, I don't hold any kind of panic or worry about Formanton coming back for the on ice product here because this team's set. Posh Horace says Ridley Gregg will have a permanent spot on this roster by the end of the season. I'm going no on that just because this is a tough lineup to crack, and if he does have a permanent spot. I would way rather have him playing top six minutes in Belleville than a fourth line role in Ottawa. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. B fudge says that Branstrom ends the season with 36 points. That's very exact and overtakes Shabbat for power play two. I'm assuming that he believes that the Debrinket unit is PP one then. Cause Shabbat's on the first power play unit, no matter what. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can, I can see Branstrom getting around 36 points, but I don't think he would replace Shabbat. I think he would re- replace Sanderson if if anything was going to happen there. I love this one from Patrick. Pinto becomes the first ever to actually live up to the Patrice Bergeron <laughs> comparisons and cements that this year. Something Let's interesting. So. On, something interesting on Pinto is this is a contract year for him as well because he missed all of last year and he had the year burn the year yep. before to start his entry level. So... Very interesting. Uh, a little golf reference here. Goes to jail, escapes. Our boy, Frank Senators. Uh, no surprise there. Uh, Josh Norris wins the Norris Trophy. I like the play on words there, Noah. But that would be... I mean, it's named after him. It's only fair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, John Doe writing in that uh, Pinto will light it up. Stutzla needs to play with Kachuk for protection. What's your take on that? They played together last night. Yeah, uh, I really prefer the the status quo top six, but if once in a while you, you got to mix it up, I'm okay with that. I don't think it's more for protection though. Maybe against the Montreal Canadiens though, that, uh, that Jack eye guy, he, the Habs have nothing better to do than to target the Sens top player. So he may need a little extra protection there. 
Yeah, it's wild. Uh, how about this one from Mike? Sanderson's better than Shabbat. I don't know if that means by the end of the season. I'd say probably. Yeah. Like, that's probably what he means. I, I don't know. I, I think long term, he probably is. I mean, the draft pedigree, would, would you'd hope so. Um, but Shabbat, I feel like is being the guy who plays the most minutes on a bad team yeah. can do bad things for your reputation. I think I'm hopeful that we're going to really see how good Thomas Shabbat is this year because he's been put in some unfortunate situations. I'd say even worse than Gustafson Pills. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, if he gets a full year of playing with Zub as his partner, that's going to do wonders for him. So I, I, I'm with you. I think maybe down the road, Sanderson could overpass Shabbat, but it's not going to be this year. Timothy says that Brady will bite Brendan Lemieux. No, Tim, Brady would never. Not even kids do that. Babies don't even do that. <laughs> we, need, we need that clip <laughs> as well. Um, and by the way, please let us know if there's any sound bites that you want us to get. Shoot us a note on Twitter at Sens. So, uh, Tim, point per game player. We've already touched yep, on that. On Brochensky that. Go- going wild. Helberg wins the Vesna. Look good, play good. Yeah, look good, play good. Uh, Helberg, when he comes into the net, Hell's Bells goes. That would actually be be sick. Love it. Yep. Uh, Pinto, a lot of Pinto here. But here, let's go negative. Four regresses and goaltending becomes a glaring issue on this team. No, get out of here, Muffin Man. And then, uh, go sends Goblin. JBD <laughs> is not as good as y'all want him to be. How good do we want JBD to be? I want JBD to be a, a defense partner for Thomas Spot one day. So, yeah. He's got a ways to but go. Not, yeah, fair. Yeah, he does. He does, for sure. But I did like what I saw in camp. He didn't get to play in uh, the game in Newfoundland. I, I hope he's got to be playing tomorrow. In, yeah, in New Brunswick. He's got to be gotta playing be, yeah. tomorrow. By the way, Zaitsev dashed two yesterday in a 4 3 win. Mm, yep. uh, and then he says number eight should be unretired. I feel like we're past that now just because if they unretired it now, like, They'd have to give it to Timmy. Yeah, and then we don't want Frank Finnegan's ghost haunting the CTC. So maybe just avoid that. Yeah, all right. That's awesome. Really appreciate everyone for reaching out. The replies are still coming in, and we appreciate everybody throughout the year who is uh, who's interacted with us online, whether it's on Twitter, at Send Central, or on Instagram, LockedOn.Senators. Pilsy, this just got my juices flowing for the entire season. Like, obviously... A lot of these are best case scenarios, but that to say, it's just exciting that hockey season is finally here and the Ottawa Senators are back. And Ross, you know what I love about all those hot takes? Not a single one mentioned the word draft. Yeah. I feel like the last couple of years, all the hot takes were the Sens will draft this guy. They will have this draft position. They'll win the lottery. None of that this year. That is such a breath of fresh air. Let's get to some quick draft picks as we head into a Thanksgiving long weekend. Pilsy, no show Monday, right? No, no show Monday. No show Monday. Programming note, no show Monday, but we are recording on Monday an interview you're going to want to hear on Tuesday. All right, so that to say, talking draft picks in Ottawa tonight. If you're looking for plans on a Friday night, Thomas Hamara and the Kitchener Rangers are going to be taking on Tyler Boucher and the Ottawa 67s. It'll be fun to see those two go head-to-head. Definitely, and uh, the 67s are 2-0 and on the season, where the visiting Kitchener Rangers are 0-2 on Ooh. the season. I love to see that. I want Hamar to do well, but don't want the Rangers to do well. So the 67s can stay a uh, perfect season here, hopefully. And not only that, but Hamar is a left-side defenseman, and Tyler Boucher is a right wing, so we might see a couple battles between those two. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Overseas, Oliver Johansson, the yep. third round third round pick, 72nd overall in the 2021 NHL draft, has signed a two-year extension with Timra in the Swedish Hockey League, but it comes with a caveat. He's now been loaned to the Allsvenskan, the second division in Sweden, for the remainder of this upcoming year. I don't know if you want to take a try at the pronunciation of this team, but I'm not. Um, I F I'm not even gonna try it. You try. I'll pull it up. So everyone here can understand that. I'm not just like trying to get out of an easy one. Here. Isn't it the Bjork Uh, when you have two umlauts in one word, I start to wonder how you pronounce it. 
Yeah, I, I think it's it's Bjorkloven. Okay, well, we're going to be and following Bjorkloven. Johansson, the lineup card has been put out thanks to Sen's Prospect, and he is slotted as the second line right winger. Well, there you go. See, that's why it's better, because he played in six SHL games this year, but basically had no opportunity in those games, yeah. averaging seven minutes, like his, his game log. Last game he played was plus one, one shot on goal, played five minutes. And then... In between these games, as one does in the in the European leagues, he was sent down to the J20 Nationals. But he's got five points in four games down there, playing sporadically, like on and off. Like he's too good for the junior level. Still 19, though. But now he'll get a chance to play against men, but not in the SHL. So I like this move for, for so Johansson as his development. Yep. Yeah, I think that's the right spot for him. Very late birthday, I'm just noticing as well. He was uh, uh, two months, less than two months away from being available in the 2022 NHL draft. So just a, uh, a note there. And again, stick taps to at Sens Prospects for catching that. Always after the weekend. So on Tuesday, we'll have our interview that we're not going to tease yet. But once we have it, we'll probably tweet out a little something at Sens Central. On Tuesday, we'll also do our Sens Prospect Roundup. And then on Wednesday, we'll get Dean Brown's view from the broadcast booth, uh, a recurring guest on the show. And then on Thursday, all vibes. Game preview. Let's go. It can't be as good as the opener last season, though, eh? Where we had the Brady contract and the home opener, rear boots on the ground. Like, it can't be that good, can it? Ross, that was wild because... I was driving to Ottawa that day. Yeah, no service, right? And I had no service. I was living in a world for about two or three hours where Brady Kachuk had signed his massive extension and I did not know. That was crazy to arrive into service and have you call me, break the news, and I have put a it in the happening. I put your reaction in the video we did for that. Okay, yeah. nice. Oh, Crazy. that was great. That's a year ago, Pilsy. It's time for Senators Hockey. It's coming soon, and we appreciate you making us your first listen each and every weekday. Be a friend, tell a friend. The growth of the show has been astounding, and we absolutely love interacting with you guys online as well, at Send Central on Twitter, Locked On Senators, Locked On Dot Senators, I should say, on Instagram, and you can also hit us up if you have a local business in Ottawa and you want to get the word out. You can email us. There's a business inquiry email on our youtube page pilsy as we do at each and every show do you have any final thoughts i'm so fired up to see magnus helberg play in uh in his new setup it'll be interesting to see if the if the blocker and glove and or helmet is ready as well you think he wears it in new brunswick tomorrow i hope so all right I sometimes hope so. the goalies like to break him in at least for a practice or two yeah, i don't know if you can have the time that's definitely fair. But, I mean, it's preseason. Just just give us a show. Well, it's also his first game. You only have time to make one first impression. That's true. Well, nah, he's already made a first impression, and, and it's good so far. Number 39 <laughs> and a sick setup. I like him. All right, goalie-friendly show. The Senators wrap up their preseason schedule on Saturday in New Brunswick against the same Montreal Canadiens. All right, four in a row. Preseason's too long, but the hot takes, it's time. For today, we say goodbye. For Brandon Piller, I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators Podcast. It's your team every day.